Many people have been waiting for the balancing patch notes for Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition, and in this video we'll bring you just that. For all intents and purposes, we are going to focus solely on the technical aspects of the game related to combat here, so this is for you hardcore min-maxers who want to know how your builds have changed or what is new. Please keep in mind that these patch notes are based on an internal document I received from Larian almost two weeks ago, and that these are not official, as all things are subject to change until confirmed by Larian. Economy Updated Item Prices Unique items in vanilla are too valuable. Their prices are now more in sync with legendary items of the same level, but still higher. Armor prices now reflect their utility. In vanilla, there is too much of a price difference on armor pieces that actually give a similar same amount of armor points. Balancing, reduced damage of some 3 SP skills. In vanilla, Aerostorm, Hailstorm, Meteor Shower, Thunderstorm, Bloodstorm, and Ethereal Storm are frequently cited as win buttons that lead to one-shots. There was room for nerfing without making them any less fantastic. Remove stat jump at level 13, slowed down the curve by 3%. In vanilla, there is an artificial stat jump at level 13 meant to separate lower Reaper's Coast content from upper Reaper's Coast content. This jump is too noticeable for the player since Reaper's Coast ends up having a very open flow. We remove this jump and analyze the other stat jumps at levels 9, 16, and 18. Revised persuasion difficulties all across arcs. Persuasion in arcs is disproportionately hard compared to its result. We fix that. This includes making tagged persuasion moments easier, which rewards tag usage. Human racial bonus buffed. Humans have had their racial bonus changed and buffed. In vanilla, humans received plus 5% critical chance and plus 2 initiative. Now they gain plus 5 critical chance and plus 10% critical damage. Fixed damage from heal missing some damage bonuses. Healing can damage the undead and characters with decay. However, in that case, the damage dealt now will also receive bonuses from warfare and it can now crit if you have the Savage Sword Leash talent. Reduce damage bonuses on non-unique weapons. Close to the end of vanilla game, bonuses on simple rare weapons are getting so high that they start overtaking unique weapons. We fix this without making rare weapons less interesting. They still have bonuses, but the curve was improved. Torture talent now allows applying damage statuses through armor. Burning, poisoned, and bleeding are now applied on top of armor. This makes these statuses useful again once you don't have armor anymore. Added optional teleportation counter to items with teleport use action. For planar gateway skill, we reduce the AP cost without opening the possibility of infinite turn exploit. We can do this because we now have a maximum number of teleport use actions on the item. Lone Wolf abilities and attributes now are capped at normal caps. Currently, Lone Wolves can increase attributes and combat abilities through the soft caps of 40 and 10 points respectively. In the Definitive Edition, this is blocked. Double point bonus only brings points to the cap and not above it. Totems now have intelligence scaling. Totems now gain intelligence points when growing in levels. This makes it so the damage they deal follows the norm of the end game. Increased SP cost of overpower. Overpower was incorrectly underpriced. Made AI more likely to attack players that have damage reflection. It was still too hard to get AI to attack characters with reflection, which made it an aggro reducing stat instead of an offensive one. So we are now making this type of enemy more interesting to the AI. High quality wands create surfaces. High quality wands didn't create surfaces anymore and that was a mistake. They totally should. Some extra highlights from comments. Slower exponential growth, about 35% difference at max level. No stat jump around level 13. Rebalancing of armor, resistances, and combat abilities in many fights starting with mid game. New scale for tactician that starts with lower values and grows with levels. Buffs and fixes for various summons. In addition, in Tactician, Physical Armor Multiplier should be raised slightly above Magic Armor Multiplier to offset prevalence of physical damage stacking builds. Skill Buffs and Nerfs Buffs Petrifying Touch Damage increased by 33% Sucker Punch Damage increased by 10% Mosquito Swarm Cooldown reduced to 3 turns Increased Damage of Infect by 10% Increased Duration of Door to Eternity to 3 turns Increase Fire Whip damage by 30% to 10 to 11 at level 1 with 10 int with 2 pyro. Add damage bonus from Power Infusion and Farsight Infusion to corresponding tooltips. Blood Infusion now provides Necromancy. Shadow and Warp Infusion should provide 25% damage increase like Power and Farsight do. Increase Supercharger damage bonus to 100% and reduce the cooldown to 2 turns. Reduce Challenge Cost to 0 AP, duration to 2 turns. Increase win bonus to 20% damage, remove damage loss on challenge loss. Heal now doesn't damage undead casters and the amount of the heal is doubled. Increase assassinate damage by 20%. Reduce cooldown of tornado by 5 turns, increase radius of rallying cry to 6 meters, increase radius of squall to 5 meters. 
Nerfs. Reduce Flay skin duration to 2 turns. Reduced overpower damage by 25%. Reduced Grasp of the Starve damage by 17%. Decrease the radius of Grasp of the Starve to 5 meters. Final thoughts. Most players should be able to see from the notes that whatever builds they prefer using are still intact. There weren't really any drastic changes per se, so I think players will find things mostly the same, except Challenge, which is just godly now. Summoning also got a decent amount of buffs and has performed extremely well in the Lone Wolf run that we are currently doing. If you haven't managed to catch Marco and I yet, be sure to swing by our Twitch channel and do so. I think the biggest change that Lyrian has made balancing-wise is that they've tried to lessen the gap between physical and magic damage types. They have buffed physical armor values on Tactician and also increased the dodge chance of enemies, making physical damage less effective overall. Whether it's on par with magic damage or still stronger is hard to say, as I've made it only a short way in Act 1. However, I've missed enough attacks now that I certainly feel the change, and I'm slightly anxious the later acts of the game may be harder indeed. Overall, the changes should make for a better gameplay experience, and I'm especially excited to see that Warfare now affects healing damage, which if you remember is something we asked for in our 10 Changes We Want video. The sleeker UI along with some quality of life changes and enhanced graphics are nice, but there are still a few bugs present, at least on console. All in all, it's a definite upgrade, and I think players will be happy with it. I know I am. Be sure to check out our other Divinity Original Sin 2 articles and guides, and stay tuned for more of our playthrough on our Twitch channel.